What does take a deep breath, let's think through this step by step, tree of thought, chain of thought, what do all of these have in common? So one thing that I've noticed is that out there in the scientific literature and the prompt engineering space, there are all kinds of techniques that have been elucidated by papers such as this one, uh, large, large language models are zero-shot reasoners, um, where it's like, let's think through this step by step. Great, that was a popular one. Um, I don't think it was worthy of a paper, but that's my personal opinion. Um, the most recent one is take a step back, which basically just says, let's take a step back and think about what, what information or techniques we need in order to uh, achieve this. Another one is take, telling the model to take a deep breath. Uh, elicits very different behaviors from the model, which I think is just fundamentally a flaw with the way that it's trained, um, rather than something about the model itself, wherein basically if you train the model to just barf out an answer without thinking through it, um, that's the result you're going to get. So this could be fixed with uh, training schemas. Uh, tree of thoughts, which is where you basically use iteration and brainstorming to think through uh, various possibilities. And then finally, uh, or I guess similarly, uh, guided tree of thought um, as an answer. So what is the underpinning thing about all of this? What is it that these, uh, all these papers and techniques are missing that is not yet generalized? So the reason that I haven't made a video about this is because to me, having worked with models since GPT-2 and GPT-3, it seems rather obvious. Um, but so I'm adding, I'm adding uh, a little bit of to the, to the conversation. And what's missing is the idea of latent space activation. So here's what you need to understand about the way that intelligence actually works. If you think about in the way that human brains work, we, uh, you have an intuition, right? If you, if you have a question or a problem, you have many brain structures that will just give you an instantaneous uh, possible answer. This is called intuition. Intuition is knowing something without knowing how you know it. One single inference from an LLM is equal to human intuition. It hasn't thought about it. It just says, this is my gut instinct. This is my knee-jerk reaction. However, humans can also think through things in order to get the right answer. Like, let me consider what I actually know. Let me think about the, the proper techniques to go through this. So there's a really famous book that is really popular in many intellectual circles and wherever called Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman, where he talks about system one thinking, which is that instant knee-jerk intuitive uh, thinking, which is what a single inference of a la large language model is the equivalent of. And then there's uh, system two thinking, which is slow thinking. It's very deliberative, where you jot down your thoughts and you take notes and you kind of recruit all the stuff that you have, and you're very systematic about how you approach things. This is what all these other prompt strategies do. So anytime you have multiple steps, whether it's using Langchain, tree of thought, chain of thought, chain of reasoning, let's think through this step by step where basically you're saying, okay, let's use the model to prompt itself in order to get better stuff into uh, whatever's going on here. So Great. How do you use all this? Uh, this is a question that I've been seeing lately because I made a recent video about uh, sparse priming representations, and I didn't realize that a lot of people wouldn't understand how to use this because, again, like I, maybe it's just because I've been in it so long and I forgot to explain it. Anyways, basically what you do is you use the same techniques that your brain uses, that you use consciously or unconsciously, to prompt the model, and what you're doing is, is what I call latent space activation. And so what you need to understand about latent space activation is that these models are trained on infinitely more knowledge than you will ever personally possess, but it's not going to be activated at all times. Likewise, you might have heard like, oh, humans only ever use 10% of our brains, which is more or less true. At any given moment, most of your brain is not actively participating because if your brain goes to 100% activation, you basically go into a coma and you die because it overloads itself. Likewise, Large language models have a tremendous amount of latent space that is just not really used. This is embedded knowledge, embedded capabilities, and it's really only going to do one thing at a time. And this is another this is another place where large language models are similar to human brains in that we have a conscious spotlight. So in, in psychology, in neuroscience, there's what's called the spotlight of consciousness, which is that your brain has all kinds of stuff, information that it is that it is filtering out um, in real time. 
there's all kinds of thoughts and memories, your brain is actively ignoring most of the information that it has access to at any given moment. This is basically a biological attention mechanism. So in the same respect, you need to use that, that spotlight of consciousness in large language models to sequentially scan over and figure out what it needs to know in order to bring the correct things into its quote unquote consciousness or into the context window and activation. And so I was like, let me just do a quick demonstration. I started working on a second demonstration, but I'm just gonna show you this first one. So in this, in this example, um, rather than having, uh, you know, like kind of a, a fixed set of prompts, what you can do is you just think through like, okay, how would I answer a general purpose question? Who was emperor during the absolute apogee of Roman power? So the first thing that you do is when you ask yourself this question, you think, hmm, well, what do I know about Rome? Uh, what, what do I know that is relevant to this question? The next thing you do is say, well, how do I define the answer? What criteria am I looking for in order to judge this on? And then finally, you say, okay, based on activating everything that I have in my brain, what is the answer that I'm going to settle on? So let me give you, let me just show you the script that I wrote and uh, how this works. So the script is here, technique dialogue, technique 01 dialogue. And so basically all you do is I have it, here, let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, I have it ask the, 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 the user, what is your main query or question? And then I have some general purpose placeholder uh, questions that kind of abstract this process. And so the question is, the first question that it asks itself is what information do I already know about this topic? What information do I need to recall into my working memory to best answer this? What techniques or methods do I know that I can, and this is, this is the second one, what techniques or methods do I know that can, I, that can answer this question or solve this problem? How can I integrate what I already know and recall more valuable facts, approaches, and techniques? I probably should use the word methods um, here because the, well, I guess I used methods. Um, and finally, with all this in mind, how will I discuss the question, or I will now discuss the question or problem and render my final answer. And so this is a very, very, very simple chain of thought um, set of reasoning, but the purpose of this is that it understands how to uh, approach this. And if you look here, it actually accumulates it all in a conversation. And so one thing that I've noticed and that plenty of other people have noticed is that the more the more uh, like valid or salient information you have in the context window, the more latent space it activates. And so in this case, what I do is I have a system uh, message, which let me show you that real quick. So the system message that runs this uh, basically tells it what it is. So uh, you are, let, here, let me go here. You are an internal dialogue iterator for an LLM, large language model neural network. LLMs possess latent space or embedded knowledge and capabilities. You will be given a main query as well as a sequence of questions. Your role is to answer the queries as a way of activating the latent space inside your own neural network. This is not unlike how, how a human may talk through a problem or question in order to recruit the appropriate memories and techniques. The ultimate goal is to answer the main query listed below. Um, and then I actually had to fix this on my local code because it was hard coded and <laughs> so I'll update this. Um, anyways, interaction schema. The user will play the role of interrogator. Your answers will be thorough and comprehensive in order to get the best possible latent space activation. Anything potentially salient is valid to bring up as it will expand your internal representation or embedding, thus recruiting more relevant information as the conversation advances. Okay, cool. So let me show you what this actually looks like. Okay, so here we are. Here's the, here's the repo. So let me just show you real quick. All right, so Python technique dialogue Pi01. And um, like I said, I fixed, I fixed the system message uh, locally. So Python uh, technique 01. So it's gonna ask me a main query or question. So I'll, I'll show you the, the one that I, that I did originally so that you can see kind of the process. Um, who was emperor? Actually, no, let's change it up to be a little bit more specific. Um, who were some of the senators uh, who were important during Rome at its peak power. Okay, so this is a question that is not as simple as like who is the emperor because it probably just knows that. Um, but this is going to this is something that's going to require it to think through what it has. Okay, so what information do I already know about this topic? So what I did was instead of writing a prompt that is very specific to like any given query. Okay, so let's see what it says. But basically what I said is like, uh, I, I kind of framed it generally like, let's think through this step by step. 
To answer this question, I need to recall information about the Roman Empire, specifically during its peak. Um, let's see. The structure of the Roman government as Senate, blah, blah, blah. Additionally, I need to remember. So it didn't give anything specific. Um, so in this case, it's a little bit disappointing because I what I would have hoped is that it would have listed out specific information. And finally, with all this in mind, I will now discuss the problem and render my final answer. Um, but, interestingly enough, it actually provided it. So it knew Marcus Tullius Cicero. Uh, it knew, uh, so Cicero, he was, he was, he was a big speaker. Uh, Cato, uh, Polio, uh, Gaius Asinius, uh, uh, Vipsanius, Agrippa. So the uh, Agrippa family, that was big. Marcus Aurelius. So yeah, so in this case, it was able to 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 basically dial into the answer and and give me a valid answer. Um, now, I would have hoped that it would have listed out some of the um, some of the people already. I guess it did. Here's Marcus Aurelius and and a few others. Um, but because it activated all of this, and of course, like you can do a test and ask this question um, just like sight unseen. But the point is, is that this is a very similar uh, prompting strategy, and it ultimately gave me a pretty good answer. Um, here's another one that I that I tried. So let's let's do a clear screen, um, and and we'll do this again, and um, calculate the exact coastline of Britain. Okay, so for some background, the reason why this is a challenging thing is because the coastline of Britain is very jagged and angular, and it also changes with tides and time, um, and it's also it depends on how you define a coastline. Um, so here we go. So it says, like, I don't have working memory in the same way humans do. So I really wish that OpenAI would stop, like, stuffing this kind of, like, arbitrary, like, asinine uh, logic. It, I don't have working memory in the same way humans do. That's not necessarily true, but, like, they're they're teaching their models to, to axiomatically believe this. Um, anyways, so what's going on here? Okay, cool. So coastline paradox, so it understands the coastline paradox. Uh, Britain's coastline measurement techniques, there are a number of units of measurement to calculate the exact we would need a detailed and up-to-date map or satellite. So it's basically figuring out what information it needs. Um, and it says, like, I don't have access to this information. So in a cognitive architecture, what you would do is you'd actually use retrieval augmented generation, where what you then do is you use you recognize that you need to search for information. Um, so let's see. Then what techniques or methods do I know of that can do this? Cartographic measurement, satellite imagery, GIS software, fractal analysis. Um, I don't have the capability to perform these measurements directly. So it's aware of its own limitations. So that's a good agent model. Um, that I do approve of, but complaining about working memory is a waste of time and energy. Um, and finally, with all this in mind, I will now discuss uh, and render my final answer. The exact coastline of Britain is challenging to determine because of the paradox, so on and so forth. The uh, coastline of Britain is often reported to be about 12,000 kilometers. However, this is an estimate. Um, so in this case, the, it, it pretty much failed, but that's kind of, this was, this was a gotcha. And so what I started working on was right here. So let's, let me show you this other technique that I started working on. Um, and so this is something that I have, I have done and I have, um, I have uh, consulted for people doing something similar. But it's a brainstorm, brainstorm search hypothesize refine loop. So the BSHR loop is basically just what humans do. And this is another reason why I haven't commented on this. And, and I apologize because, like, I recognize that not everyone, you know, is familiar with information foraging uh, techniques that humans use. But basically the BSHR loop is you brainstorm a list of search queries, which if you've used tools like perplexity, um, you, you see that, like, this is what it does where, like, and honestly, like perplexity could be infinitely better because all it does is it generates like really like basic um, uh, Google queries. So let me show you what I mean by like um, let's let's take this let's take this question and I'll show you what I mean by like generating um, generating uh, like valid search queries. So if we go to if we go to the the playground, I can show you what I mean. I haven't finished this because like. Uh, the coding is a little bit tedious, but anyways. Um, so mission, uh, you are a uh, search query generator. You will be given um, a specific uh, query or problem by a uh, by the user, 
and you are to generate a JSON list of uh, questions that will be used to search the internet. Make sure you search, uh, you generate uh, comprehensive and counterfactual um, search queries. Uh, employ everything you know about information foraging and information uh, literacy to generate the best possible questions. Okay, so um, as I've mentioned in other videos, um, this is this is what's called priming. And so with priming, uh, large language models will recognize certain concepts or terms and it will activate the network in a different way. And at the activation, quote unquote, is basically the internal representation, the embedding is gonna look different. And so I said comprehensive and counterfactual. I said, employ everything you know about information foraging, which is a very specific term, and information literacy to generate the best possible questions. So I'm going to say, calculate the exact coastline of Britain. And in this case, what it's going to do, um, it's going to uh, ask a bunch of questions um, that, are, that are relevant. Um, how often is the coastline measured? Uh, what impact does erosion have? What are the longest and shortest estimates? So you can see that it's basically like generating a whole bunch of questions so that it, it once it searches, like imagine you run all of these Google searches and then you take notes. So this is the brainstorm phase. Um, and I hear I'm, this is actually super valuable. So I'm going to record this as a, uh, as a hypothesis generator. Okay. Sorry about that. I was just realized like, Hey, I just did a good thing. Um, okay. So then the BSHR loop. So the brainstorm search hypothesize uh, refine loop is basically what you would then do is you would take each of these queries, put it into a Google search or a DuckDuckGo search or even a Wikipedia search, and then with the with the, the like the, the main query in mind, you take notes. And so large language models have a really great ability to, you know, you, you search a document, you take notes, and then you generate a hypothesis. And so I've got um, some of the other script out here. Let's see, where did it go? There it is. So I've started working on a script and you can, you can look at some of what I've got out here, but it'll basically say like, generate a hypothesis. Uh, and, and you give it a question, some sources of information, and you ask it to generate a hypothesis. And then you update that hypothesis over time. So that's the refine. And so this brainstorm search hypothesize refine loop, this is how humans answer questions. Now, what you might what you might add to this loop is another like you know perform a test or an experiment or you know perform a calculation, and this this is where you're getting into more like formalized cognitive architectures. Ideally, you create something that can that can construct these loops automatically, fully in real time. But in in the immediate future, like doing a brainstorm search hypothesis refine loop, this is going to be good enough for information literacy. And this is honestly one of the reasons why I um, I also canceled my perplexity um, uh, subscription is because all it does is it it does a really like uh, like a what I would call a naive search. So if you use perplexity, um, a naive search is it doesn't really think about the question that you're answer you're asking. It doesn't generate those good uh, questions like what I just uh, showed you. It just basically translates it to a really really dumb. Google Google query and doesn't use its its inter, intrinsic uh, information literacy and information foraging knowledge to ask actually good questions. So I'm like, okay, well, I can ask better search questions because I've got better Google foo. So whatever, I'm not going to use it uh, now. But then what what perplexity does that it does well? And let me just show you. Okay, so what I mean when I say that like perplexity doesn't have good Google foo, um, I'm, I, let me ask the same question. Oops. Um, what is the exact coastline of Britain? And so it'll actually show you like the, it, like, so all it, literally all it did is say exact coastline of Britain. That is not good information foraging. Um, like it's just, it, it, it took a really complex question and spat out a like really basic, like, okay, I could have done that. And then all it does is aggregate this, uh, this information. And so because it's not because it's not engaging in counterfactuals, because it's not engaging in good information literacy, if its search query rip, like pulls up like bad information, it will just tell you patently false information that's that it's reports from the internet. And so, like for instance, one thing that I that I did before here, let me let me start a new thread. Um, 
Uh, let's see. Tell me about AI destroying jobs. So if you follow my channel, you know that I will uh, occasionally document like AI destroying jobs. And so here it generated a couple of things, um, you know, a, a couple of, of uh, search queries, um, you know, but it's like, well, AI might, might reduce the, it can also create new employment opportunities. So it didn't actually generate any counterfactual searches. It just like it, it did a, a, a very naive search and just kind of gives you that information sight unseen without actually looking at the validity of the sources or even having asked good questions. Um, so anyways, there's all kinds of uh, ways to improve this if you understand the general principles and concepts of language models, such as information literacy, information foraging, um, and, and latent space activation. So I hope you got a lot out of this video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.